Ukraine has launched its all-out desperate attack in the Kursk Oblast of Russia and based on how things are going so far it would appears that Ukraine is actually for the time being gaining ground and holding off the Russians but the real question is can Ukraine actually push deeper in the Kursk Oblast that is what we're going to talk about today and can Russia even hope to push the ukrainians out this is what we're going to be discussing in the curse gold plus a few days ago i made a video basically stating how the ukrainian offensive into the curse gold plus was essentially a suicide attempt and it's basically an offensive into nowhere however based on the current reports and the way how russia have really responded it would appear that the ukrainian offensive can actually go much deeper into the Kursk Oblast than what was expected and in fact there might even be a possibility that the Ukrainians might be able to push all the way to Kursk city itself crazy enough if the Russians don't get their act together so far there are rumors that the Ukrainians are attempting to circle Russians. In fact, the Ukrainians have actually already surrounded a few Russians already in the Kursk Oblast, surprisingly enough, which is stunning, I must admit, to be honest with you. And honestly, I do believe that the Ukrainians might be able to go a bit deeper, even maybe all the way to Kursk if the Russians don't really and truly start digging defensives because the Ukrainian tactic of warfare is mobile warfare, right? And they've already broken through the two Russian lines of defenses in the Kursk Oblast. And if Russia does not build new defensive quickly, there's a chance that Ukraine might be an unstoppable force. Now you might be asking, well, where is the Russian Air Force in all of this? Well, the reason why you don't see the Russian Air Force is very simple. Ukraine is using its best AA ground to air missiles, better should I say, in that region, meaning that the Russian air is completely useless. However, the question is, how far can those AA missiles go? Because that is really and truly the key to this whole thing. The key to this whole thing, frankly speaking, is keeping the Russian air out of the picture. You keep the Russian air out of the picture and you keep the offensive as mobile as possible. There's actually a good chance that Ukraine could honestly push deeper. However, you also have to take a look at the logistics at the same time. There are reports, though, that the Russians are beginning to hold their ground. In fact, I've actually seen plenty of reports of the Russians really and truly uh, fighting stiffly in some regions. And honestly, Ukraine is very smart for this. Instead of fighting those Russians, simply what they do is they simply go around those defensive lines. It's honestly genius because every single time the Russians try to fight, try to stand their ground, the problem is that the Russians don't have their cohesion together yet. And if they don't have their cohesion together, Ukraine can essentially just continuously break their lines over and over and over and over again. They can essentially just keep flanking them over and over. So even though you do have Russian defenders that would be very tenacious, very hard to thwart, they would still be forced to withdraw. In fact, this is actually the case where a bit to the northwest of originally where Ukraine started its offensive, Ukraine is already blowing up bridges essentially trying to trap the russians on that side because it appears that they're going to launch another incursion into the oblast on that side and they've already been given orders the russians of course to withdraw to the other side of the river before the last bridge gets blown up now if i was russia personally speaking i would immediately 
just be forced to give up territory this is the only way that russia can probably counter this this is the only way for russia to counter the ukrainian doctrine of war which is basically mobile war be super mobile be super agile but that the enemy just can't stop you right because without the without the air force right it, it, it's all up to the ground forces at this point right but it, because if the air force can't do anything you need to rely on your defenses at that point that's that, that's where your defenses are really key but your defenses are really useless because they're in a static position number one number two static defenses are really terrible when you're going up against a mobile opponent which is what ukraine is doing and honestly as much as i would uh, trash on ukraine i must it is very genius of ukraine but the problem with ukraine though is how much can they do this for right how long until they run out of those capabilities not even their mobile tanks their vehicles i don't i'm pretty sure ukraine has more than enough the problem isn't really that the problem is how much a capabilities because you need to understand ukraine has to defend its own territory as well right ukraine has so little of these equipment <laughs> in fact that i'm pretty sure honestly if ukraine had more they honestly probably would have been able to push it much more deeper into the curse called Plaza. in fact probably all the way up to curse city itself right however you also need to ask yourself a question because it, it appears that the way how the russian high command is responding to this they're more or less ignoring it right they're more or less sort of uh brushing it off because the russians are pushing hard in the donetsk basin in the donetsk theater right they really have an advantage right in the donetsk theater so this is now boiling down to who can crack the other first and the question is who will break first in my personal opinion, I do believe Ukraine might be able to break Russia, but that's a very slim chance. And how can Ukraine break Russia? Simple. If they're able to take Cursed City and show the whole world that they're very serious about this, one, they'll be able to negotiate this if they're able to hold Cursed City, actually. That would be such a good way for Ukraine, I must admit. Uh, but the problem is, how will Russia respond to that? Because right now, Russia is really and truly holding back. But if it gets to the point where proper Russian cities are being taken, large Russian cities are being taken, you might face the real might of the Russian army bearing down on you because you need to understand this is not Ukraine. That wouldn't be Ukraine that they're fighting in anymore. That would be Russia, right? That would be Russia defending itself. So Russia can use any and every to defend itself and the thing about this whole offensive is unless ukraine is trying to get, gather as much territory as possible to negotiate then this offensive is pointless however if the russians don't get their act together if ukraine can keep up their anti-air capabilities if ukraine can make sure that the russian air force stays on the ground doesn't interfere if Ukraine can continuously circumvent those new Russian defensive positions before they are set up properly, then my friend, this offensive might actually turn into something quite unexpected for the Russians, frankly, really and truly. And, and like I said, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Don't let your enemy recover and you, you need to just keep beating them down before they get back up because once they get back up, once the russians really and truly recover and get breathing space then the whole thing is basically over with right the whole offensive is basically over with for ukraine frankly speaking so 